Welcome, my name is Tim, and in this short video, I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot a faulty thermostat on a gas furnace. Now to begin with, as in each service call, we need to ensure that the thermostat is actually calling for heat. So click the system selector switch to the heat position. By doing this, you'll also turn up the temperature setting above the room temperature. Next, you're going to need to click OK on the procedure guide, and you're going to have to refer to the procedure guide after each process. Our next step is to remove the cover from the furnace by clicking on it. Click OK on the procedure guide. Now, when we remove the door, this door switch right here is going to open its contacts and break power to the furnace. So it's going to be pretty important to make sure that we've got power going to the furnace before we can do any electrical troubleshooting. So click on this rectangle up here with the little orange outline, and that'll place a piece of tape over the door switch ensuring its contacts are closed. Click OK on the procedure guide. Our next step is to take a brief inventory of the sequence of operations and the loads that actually start. Well, when you turn the thermostat to call for heat, the first load that should operate would be the inducer or combustion air blower shown right here. And as evidenced by the stationary arrows, uh, this is not running. So we're going to click no on the procedure guide. Now our next step is to see if in fact 120 volts is being received at the integrated furnace control or the IFC. Now, although we tape the door switch in, it's possible that its contacts are faulty, or it's possible we don't have main power due to a breaker being tripped or a service switch being in the off position. So first, we're going to measure for 120 volts at the line voltage inputs on the IFC. The line connection is right here at this glowing orange hotspot, and we could just drop one of our leads right on there. Our other lead can be placed at the neutral connection or the neutral block at the bottom of the IFC right on that glowing orange hotspot. And we see we have 120 volts, and this verifies that in fact we do have power being received at the IFC. So we're gonna click yes on the procedure guide. Our next step is to check for 24 volts at the R and C terminals on this low voltage terminal strip over here on the left. Now R and C is actually the 24 volt output from the transformer. Uh, and also just verifies that we're sending power to the thermostat. And when we place the leads across here, we have 24 volts. So our transformer is good, and we're actually sending power from this red terminal through this red wire up to the thermostat. So we're going to click yes on the procedure guide. Now, before I go any further, let's click on the wiring diagram and just take a look at this. Um, if you look at the wiring diagram, we can see our meter leads are basically placed at the transformer secondary connections, and we have 24 volts. And again, this 24 volts is being received uh, at the thermostat connections. Our next step is to move the lead from the R terminal to the W terminal. Now, when we do this, this will check the output of the thermostat. And when we do that, you see we have zero volts here. So we had power going to the thermostat. We have no power coming out of it back to the IFC. So in fact, the IFC is not being signaled to start the sequence of operations. So we're going to click no on the procedure guide. Now this pretty much verifies that the thermostat is most likely our culprit, but we want to check the wiring connections both down here at the IFC uh, to make sure they're secure, and they do appear to be secure. So the, the wires are tight. There's no loose connections. Next, we're going to go up to the thermostat and remove the cover and just take a look at the connections in there. And again, you can zoom in um, and we want to pay close attention to the RH and the W terminal here. And it doesn't appear that there's any loose connections here at the thermostat. Um, now, this most likely means our thermostat is bad. But what you could do prior to replacing the thermostat is place a jumper across the R, H, and W terminals. Now, if the unit comes on, that just simply is further verification that the thermostat is bad. If after doing this, the unit still does not start, well, unfortunately, that means there's probably a break in the thermostat wires running from the thermostat down to the IFC. Now, this is a fairly rare occurrence, but it is possible. So I always recommend placing the jumper uh, across W and RH to further verify that the thermostat's bad. Okay, so we're going to replace the thermostat now. We're going to click on it and click replace. 
And that solves our problem. One last thing you're always going to want to do is watch one full cycle of operation of the unit to make sure all other components are functioning properly and go up to the residence just to verify that heat is being received in the residence. And if we look at the floor register here, we've got this red graphic here, which verifies that we do in fact have heat coming into the residence. So that finishes our problem. One more thing here, if you click on this top left icon, you'll be able to review each step in this procedure that we just took. So if you're unclear on anything, hopefully this will clear it up for you. Good luck on all your future service calls, and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. You can try our on-demand VR-enabled learning for HVAC by signing up for a free trial. Go to interplaylearning.com to get started.